Welcome back everyone. They dropped a brand new House of the Dragon trailer. We'll break it down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs here. George R. R. Martin talking a lot about the history of the Dance of the Dragons, also going back to Aegon's conquest, and eventually what happens during A Song of Ice and Fire in the main novels during the events of the original series, Game of Thrones. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I already did an early non-spoilery review of episode one, so I'll post a link for that at the end of this and down in the description below. But just starting at the beginning of this, when Viserys the First Targaryen says the dragons are going to rule over the next hundred years, that basically takes us to the events of the second Blackfyre Rebellion in the reign of Darren the Second Targaryen. There are a couple reasons why the next hundred years are kind of a loaded term, because it references a lot of things that they also reference during the main series in Game of Thrones much later in the timeline. During both of the Blackfyre Rebellions, the Blood Raven was a big figure who becomes the Three-Eyed Raven. It is the Three-Eyed Raven. His real name was Brendan Rivers. He was a Targaryen bastard. And also, Maester Aemon was a Targaryen. Maester Aemon was alive during the events of the Second Blackfyre Rebellion. That's how old he is, that you have two Targaryens basically living up at the wall during the events of the main series. The other funny Easter egg here at the beginning of the trailer, when Viserys I talks about how dragons are going to rule over the next hundred years, just like they have over the hundred previous to this. The actual last dragon was actually born during the reign of Aegon III Targaryen, the son of Rhaenyra Targaryen, his daughter, like who we see on the main show here, in Daemon Targaryen. Now he's not born till like way later in the timeline, so we don't see him during the first couple of episodes, but eventually we'll see his birth during the events of the series. There's actually a lot of time that passes during the events of House of the Dragon. Way more time passes than you saw pass during the events of the main series, Game of Thrones. That's why they have different actresses playing the young versions of Rhaenyra and Alicent Hightower. Because when you see the older versions, it's like way later in the timeline. And when Viserys I said the dragons ruled the previous hundred years, that's also Aegon's conquest. It took place about a hundred years ago. George R. R. Martin talks a lot about the actual history of Westeros before the events of the series after Aegon's conquest, just showing you how King's Landing itself grew really fast during that period. We see the older version of Jaehaerys I, he's the fourth Targaryen king in Westeros after Aegon the Conqueror. They called him Jaehaerys the Wise just because his rule was a period of great prosperity. But then they show you all this imagery of the burning heart tree, the weirwood here. You actually see the heart tree in King's Landing, in the godswood of King's Landing during the events of the series. They're lying under it here. There was a heart tree, there is a god's wood in King's Landing. You just don't see it that much during the events of the main series, and the tree has been burned down by the events of the main series. This is sort of meant to remind you about the events of the main series, the prophecy of A Song of Ice and Fire, The Long Night, The Coming of the Night King, The White Walkers. That's briefly referenced during the events of House of the Dragon. But remember, the events on this series predate the events of the second Long Night that we see during the main series by so much that even though the Night King is active during this period in the lands of always winter, like there are White Walkers, there are Whites, they're just not very active. They're more of a myth at this point in the timeline. No nobody's actually seen them in a long time. So long so that the people of the realm have basically forgotten the original reason why they created the wall. They started to think now that it's actually to keep the free folk out of the seven kingdoms. Like, no, 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 that's not why we built the wall. We built it to keep away the White Walkers. You also get a little bit of history behind the High Towers and the Valerions, who are big houses during the events of this series. Fun fact too, they were actually still around during the events of the main series, Game of Thrones. Dan and Dave just cut them out of the original show. What actually happened is that during Robert's Rebellion, after he won and took the Iron Throne, he replaced the current Lord Valerion at that time as Master of Ships with his brother Stannis, and the Hightower still ruled over Old Town. So during the War of the Five Kings, during the Second Long Night, like all the really crazy stuff that happened during the original show, those two houses, the Valerions and the Hightowers, are still around. They're just not as active in the main events that took place. There'll probably be a little bit of confusion about that when the show picks up for people that don't read the books. Like, where were these people when the events of the main series took place? No, they were around. Like, they just cut them out of the show, basically. As he said, the Valerians actually are of Valerian blood. So just to be clear, the Valerians and the Valerians are two completely different concepts. Like, the Targaryens and the Valerians are both of Valerian descent. It's just that the Valerians were not dragon riders, and they went to Westeros long before the Targaryens did, and basically controlled all trade between Westeros and the Valerian Freehold, which is how they became so rich. By the events of this series, the Valerians have become a vassal house of House Targaryen because of what happened during Aegon's conquest. And the other really cool thing that George R. R. Martin reveals is why the Targaryens settled on Dragonstone instead of settling on the mainland of Westeros. It was all because of Danis the Dreamer's dragon dreams in the prophecy of A Song of Ice and Fire. 
Danis the Dreamer had her dragon dreams foreseeing a couple different major cataclysmic events, one of them being the Long Night eventually, but she's mostly known for having the dragon dream that foresaw the doom of Valyria, which is the whole reason why they initially left the ancient Valyrian freehold to come to Westeros. So as a measure of caution, they settled on Dragonstone. Also, the second reason for them settling on Dragonstone was because of the current state of the Seven Kingdoms, because it would start a really big war if like a giant family with a whole bunch of dragons just suddenly settled in someone else's territory. They briefly touch on the idea of dragon dreams during the events of the House of Dragon episode one. I'll talk about that when I do like my full Easter egg video for episode one. There are a lot of things that they reference in passing, but a lot of episode one is just table setting and just kind of setting up a lot of the big concepts that they'll explore during the events of the series. Episode one is going to be released in a couple weeks. Like I said, I'll do videos for all the episodes like I did for the main series. So make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. If you have any big questions or things that I haven't covered in my previous trailer videos, just write them below in the comments and I'll add them to my list of bonus videos. Everyone click here for my non-spoilery House of the Dragon episode 1 review video and click here for my Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer video and easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.